I was at home in Maplewood, New Jersey, and my kids had just gone off to school. And I don't watch TV, so I wasn't watching television. And somebody had called me and said, a plane went into the World Trade Center. I thought, well, that's weird. Didn't really think much of it. And then they said another plane, then somebody had said another plane, turn on the TV, and then, I'm trying to, it's, I'm trying to remember, but just sort of like in that impressionist painting, there was another call and somebody said that the, a plane went into the Pentagon. I was like, this is crazy. I mean, you know, don't believe everything you're told. So, then, uh, you know, it's just the terror set in and all that. The kids came home from school and I think, and, and of course, you know, I was doing 42nd Street at the time. So uh, we were told two days after the attack that we were to go back to work. So, and that's when they had all those, um, that's when they were doing the things about, uh, you know, the bomb scares and all that, and and, and uh, the New York Times was right across the street from where I was playing 42nd Street. So I remember coming into the city and thinking, I got to wear, I can't wear high heel shoes because I have to be able to outrun the fireball, you know? This is crazy stuff like that. And every time you look up up in the sky and you'd see a plane and you'd sort of see it explode in your in your mind's eye. And then when I got into the city, that smell, you know, because the winds had shifted north and the smell was in midtown. And it was a lot of terror striking in the hearts and minds. So, um, you know, you kept, I think what happens is when, when those kind of events happen, you think that you're next. You know, it's why, why did I not get killed, you know? And you think that you're next. So, and it was scary being on stage and things like that, because you think, you know, you think they're coming after you. You personalize it and you think they're coming after you. So, um, or they, you know, the perceived enemy. Um, and I just remember being, feeling really guilty because I didn't really know anyone that was killed at the World Trade Center, so I didn't really have a right to cry. But I cried a lot because I was afraid. I was terrified and I, I wanted out. I wanted to get my family out. I wanted out. Um, I didn't want to stay in New York. I wanted to run, but I didn't know where to run to. And I had to go back to work. So I um, remember one day just laying in my bed and crying and feeling guilty about crying and sort of chastising myself, saying, you have no right to cry because you didn't know anyone. And But I was asking God to remove the fear from me. Um, and the phone rang, and it was a girlfriend of mine that I had worked with many, many years ago, Terry Sire. And we, she was a beautiful dancer um, in a show that I did down in Jupiter, Florida, at the Burt Reynolds Dinner Theater, Guys and Dolls, in 1985. And she said, um, my boyfriend and I saw you in 42nd Street. I hadn't seen her in years. Saw you in 42nd Street, and he admired your talent so much and thought you were so wonderful in the show, and he was a fire captain who perished on 9-11. And I know it would make him so happy if you would sing at his memorial. 
So in that way, my prayer was answered because it was as if God was saying, you know, dry your tears now because you have work to do. And I've given you this gift of singing. And so now I want you to use that to comfort people. So that's what I did. I sang at um, St. Patrick's Cathedral for Billy Burke and a person I never met. And in a way, um, he saved my life that day too. My spiritual life in a way because um, I had forgotten who I was. I had forgotten my strength because I was so afraid. So I remember standing up at the pulpit and singing Jesus is walking with me because not only was he a fire captain, but in the summertime he was a lifeguard. So he saved people from the water and he saved people from the fire. But of course because you know, the buildings were blown up. Um, World Trade Center 1 and 2, they were blown to smithereens, so there were no bodies. And um, so his, just his fire captain's hat and his helmet and a picture of him were on a table. And everybody was there, you know, Giuliani and Clinton and all the high-ranking muckety mucks <laughs> and it was just a sea of blue there was not not a seat in the house people came from all over the, the country to pay tribute to this person and I was singing for this person that I had never met but like I said he saved me <laughs> so I'll never forget this part always makes me cry when I think about this but I remember walking out onto the street after it was over, after the ceremony was over, and you could see the ladder trucks crossed, you know, and um, two firefighters at the top. And you look down Fifth Avenue and there's no cars, and there's a fire truck with a casket in it, but it's empty. And the bagpipes were playing Amazing Grace, I think it was. And I remember Billy's sister <clears throat> had seen me as she was passing by to go into the limousine, and she just <laughs> looked at me. She just mouthed the words, thank you. And I thought, I wasn't afraid anymore that he had restored my strength in a way. So I just turned to my husband and I said, I'm among the living. So after that, I was, you know, given the opportunity to, um, I kind of, you know, people had heard me sing, so they were calling me on the phone saying, can you sing at my, son's memorial, can you sing it? Mm -hmm. Firefighter so-and-so's memorial. So that's what I was doing when I was doing 42nd Street. I'd go and sing at these memorials um, for the fallen soldiers in a way. And I felt that I could be useful I wasn't just sitting in my bed crying and feeling guilty, but I was, you know, put to use. So I was grateful for that. And uh, that's why <laughs> I, hold, I, put, I never took this out of my wallet. It's 10 years already. That's Billy Burke, the person I never met. <laughs> because he, 
he helps me not be afraid. And really afraid to, not afraid of, you know, of what I believe <laughs> to be true. Have you kept in touch with this family since then? Mm hmm Yeah. I have. Um, I just uh, emailed his, his nephew, Michael Berry, who's um, in a production of Spam a lot <laughs> on a national tour, so I'm hoping I get to see that. Nice. Yeah. You were in 42nd Street, mm -hmm. called back to work. Clearly, yeah, two people, days later. People didn't want to go, you know, people didn't want to go back to work. How no. Do you, how do you go back to work? Let's take a moment to, to conclude. How do you go back to, to work after something like that happens, especially going up on stage, dancing, singing, smiling? What was that first, first performance like? Like I said, I was scared. Um... And just, I, I was afraid for my family. And um, it, again, when the the um, the nature of terror is that it reduces you to the mind of a child, so you give away your power. You give away what you know to be true about yourself and your strength. So. You're just depending on these things outside of you for, you know, safety and things like that, which is an illusion, <laughs> but that's what you do when you're, serves, when you're scared. Uh, it's an illusion that serves us pretty well. Yes, but it's temporary, yeah. and it's not really real. The, 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 do you remember the, 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 the audience? Was there, were there a lot of people? Were there a few people? What was Broadway like? In there, was a, there were people, but I think what they were doing was, if I recall, they were um, offering tickets to... The firefighters' families and policemen's families and people whose uh, loved ones were missing. Well, I remember all of the pictures. They're just lined everywhere, missing, 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 all along the subways, all along the streets. Mm -hmm.